Good evening, everybody. Good evening, RGL. Good evening, Retrothon. I'm Yelzrake, and I'm going to be running A Link to the Past. No major glitches. It's going to be fun. I have with me D Rock91384. Say hi, D Rock. Hello, and good evening, Retrothon. You may have seen me run uh, Earthbound earlier in the week, also Little Samson this morning. <laughs> apparently, uh, <laughs> apparently I coughed the moment we went live. That was great. We'll, <laughs> we'll throw clearing action just to start it off right. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go. Just to give you a feel for what's coming for the next... Uh... We're, getting, we're getting off to a choking good start. Yes. The choking. Oh, there's, there's a theme. This is good. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, Link to the Past. No major glitches. It's a fun one. Uh, D-Rock is going to be doing most of the commentary so that I can concentrate on the choking part. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're going to... I think we're just going to get started. So, uh, we're going to... Go in five, four, three, two, one, go. You like yells, right? Thanks, man. <laughs> How's it going? It's going well on yourself. Good luck on the run. Thanks, I'm doing alright. All right. Alright, so the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna see a bunch of text appear on screen. This is Zelda um telecommunic tele telecommunicating with Link here, telling him that, you know, you need to save me. I'm in the castle London. Uh, Link's gonna spring out of bed. But his uncle's gonna stop and get Miss Jackson be like, no, 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 no. You stay right there. I'm gonna go save the princess. But uh, you know, being the steadfast hero you are, chase him off the ball. <laughs> Alright, so this is all I'll talk about in the first in the interface here, but there's some speed tech that you will see. Uh there's uh, a little bit of pumping that you can do, and uh there's also something called uh stair lag canceling that you can also do to speed up your time a bit. So the idea here is to hold one direction and tap the other direction to move Link, uh, to reset Link's movement cycle into two pixel movements. You can only move that when you're traveling north and east. You can't do it when you're traveling west or south, because uh, the game just doesn't work that way. But a uh, fun little story here, if you open up the chest in the palace, you get the lantern. If you forget to open up that chest, there's a chest in between where you get the sword and where you come out of that uh, little area there. If you open up that chest, you get the lantern. Finally, if you if you dodge both of those chests, the one in uh, Zelda's uh, cage, the one in Zelda's cell, you get the lantern. <laughs> Basically, you need the lantern to progress. You can't push the, um, the bookshelf that you need to push out of the way. Uh, at at uh, some point of escape, and uh, you can't do that unless you have the lantern. The, game yeah. you. the lantern has special powers that <laughs> that permit bookshelf opening. It's weird. All right, so you see Yells are like getting a nice little um, double slash on the blue knight there. That's exactly what you want in that room. You want to, um, what you're looking for here is, you, is with the fire sword, you're going to be seeing a lot of spin attacks and a lot of. Um, ooh. Little too low on the pumpkin there. Yeah. Nice to aggro the guard. Oh, 0 for 2 on the. Uh, I'm trying to get good spins here. <laughs> well, not 0 for 2, 1 for 2. But aggroing the guard and then missing the blue guard. So. So do, do you do uh, pot strats or do you do 8 slash? I do 8 slash. So okay, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. I'm not ashamed to go and get a heart from a pot if I screw up the 8 slash too hard, but. Oh, yeah. So, you know the 8 slash method. You need to stun that guard there, but if he moves right past that table, you actually have to kill him. Otherwise, he's going to interrupt your fight with the ball. Change that. That was a very clean fight. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Alright, so, save Princess Zelda. Yeah, this, so she wants to go to the sanctuary. So you're going to proceed back up to the throne room, push aside the bookcase, and you're going to go to the sewer. I'm forgetting like oh. half of the pumping spots you taught me about, by the way. <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> An optimal amount of pumping in the entire run will save you 20 seconds. 
If it's done correctly over the entire run, you save about 20 seconds. But it is free time. <laughs> it's free. It's just there waiting for me to do it. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking over the entire run. You're not saving 20 seconds a segment. Yeah. And yes, Ace of Arrows, this is vanilla. This is not this is not rando. This is this is the category that is best suited for uh, playing the whole game. <laughs> uh, you know, without any significant sequence breaking. Well one could say that you are that you do have a pedestal seed here. Yes, yes, it's a pedestal seed. <laughs> and and also agar required. <laughs> So, Yelzrake will indeed visit every dungeon and defeat every boss. He will not, however, collect every item. We'll go over those as we get to them. <laughs> and so, we get here two text boxes, kids with all R, push the bookcase. You can't even push the bookcase if you don't have the lamp, lantern. Right. right here is your first dark room. I'm gonna pop to the right wall. Hopefully, you don't get the dark rat. No, you didn't. That's... Sometimes, uh, as you get to the top of that um, vertical area there, the rat can dash at you out of the darkness, and you have to be pretty quick on the button to uh, avoid getting knocked back and hit there. A very nice sneak room, uh, key room, bat. Can't argue with that. So this this text box coming up right here is one of like two or three text boxes in the game that can be canceled with a directional input. So you as soon as that text box appears, you can position your fingers on the left and up so you can start pumping. And then as soon as the the text finishes, start pumping. The text box will close. Uh, as I mentioned, L and R text box cancel the last text box of any conversation with the LNR. Only the last text box of a certain scene. The other ones have to be done with A, B, Y, X. The problem is over mashing and opening the map, firing an arrow, swinging on the sword. That's where you kind of got to know how many text boxes you're opening and closing at any given time. All right, so we reached the sanctuary. 601 time. Very nice. Very nice. Thanks. So we're going to get a bunch of diatribe from the uh, priest here, and we're going to pick up that chest to the left. That's going to contain a heart container, known as the Sanctuary Heart. It is the first of many safeties in the game. It is one of the fewest time losses to get, and you will see a lot of 125-plus runners still getting it, because, it's an, I mean, dang, man, it's an extra heart. It's an extra heart the entire game for four seconds of your time, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you'd really only start dropping that when you're really starting to push like 124, 123 times. That's the only time that you really want to not get it. Otherwise, it's kind of foolish not to. It's like it's, you're just asking for trouble if you don't care. Yeah. I very many times have ended a boss fight with one heart in the dark world and it goes, well, you know, if I didn't get the shank card, I'd be dead. Alright, so, I'm gonna see Yelzrake moving through the overworld in a specific pattern. So, this is the quickest way to get to his destination as far as walking goes. And, um, he's gonna deal with a few pests along the way, but we will slash and them out of the way. See some double pumping on the stairs here, so that's so when you have rails on either side of Link, on, say, a set of stairs, you would hold up and left, and you would mash the right button, and that will make Link climb the stairs twice as fast. Messed up a little bit there, so. <laughs> yeah, if you, might, if, if, I got, if you I got, I had, I had time to get past the guard, and I, I messed it up anyway. So. Yeah, there's no shame in boomerang if you mess <laughs> up. That's okay. That's all right. There's a free heart right over here. Yeah. Literally right over here. <laughs> yeah. right got, over here. <laughs> there's, there's three on your path. If you really get wrecked in that old world, it can't happen. There's that heart. There's one in the um, Stelphos room. There's one in the dark key room. And, so uh, right here. Dan, yes, Dan's game. Vanilla Dan's game. <laughs> so right here we have <laughs> Stelphos room. But Yelzrake is going to kill two Stelphos before they even appear. 
and that's going to trigger the other two Stealthos to one of them to spawn out of the room, and one of them to spawn on top of that pod in the center. So he achieved that by walking exactly how he did into the room and over to the middle of the room exactly how he's in. He's able to only get two spawns instead of four. It's a neat little trick, saves a bunch of time. So this is the dark key room. There's a heart on the end if he needs it. Let's see here. Really good. So over here in this room, you're going to go over the can log. So another instance of double pumping. You can double pump while Link is the two rails on either side. It doesn't necessarily have to be on stairs. It can be any time that Link's pinned between two rails. So that's a very nice uh, damage boost there. So he took the damage from Popo to lift up the pot, and then he got on the switch before his iframes ended, and that allowed him to trigger the switch and get the big key without having to kill all the enemies in the room, which is the intended solution to that puzzle. Very nice. I like that left a lot, actually. Yeah, the way it's, you handle uh, that Yeah, shout outs to D Rock, who's not only doing the commentary, but has has helped to, uh, try to tutor me into the low 130s. <laughs> Hasn't actually. Um... Oh, that's garbage. Well, we still got a ways to go. Yeah. I got too close to this guy and set him off. That yeah, was my bad. you triggered him. My bad. This is a this is a rush room because you can you can lose time very easily in that room. I, having the stealthoses go out of the way or triggering the red eye go early. Otherwise, pretty clean Eastern. Very nicely done. So you're gonna see the Arbos quick kill here. So he's gonna position himself. She's gonna shoot five to the right. So he's gonna wound the last one. And then he's going to move to the left and start shooting down, killing the other ones along the way, so that when he kills the second to last one, that the last arrow that he shoots hits the one that he previously wounded before he turns red, ending the cycle. If he does turn red, he would have to tag him with three more arrows. Very nice to go. So now we're going to go see a guy about some footwear, and that footwear is going to allow us to go really, really fast. And really start opening the game up. Yeah, now the game changes entirely. <laughs> well, this is frequently where I say the the speed run really begins, because as I was as I was learning the game, I was frequently told that your time before Eastern didn't matter. That every that you could save pretty much all that time after Eastern. Like, say you're like 20, 30 seconds behind, you can save it. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. I'm sliding my thumb too fast across the uh, controller there. That's I know when I'm when I mess up spin speed. That's what I'm doing. So I gotta slow down. I gotta take it easy. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna see a series of non-major glitches that Yelzwick will perform in his speed run to go faster. The first one that you saw right there is called spin speed. So that is achieved by charging a spin attack and then releasing it and tapping the A button on the same frame. What that does is that put, that's put that puts Link into a glitch state, which allows him to move as fast as Dash, but in any direction. That is Japanese 1.0 exclusive, and that's the reason why the speedrun is done on the Japanese 1.0 cartridge. So as you can see there, you have to activate the glitch by touching stairs. Don't ask me why. I don't know the I don't know the physical reason why that triggers the glitch, but it does. You trigger the glitch by touching stairs. It probably has something to do with um, the movement, Link's movement, or something. I don't know the technical answer to that. Nor but, do I. <laughs> you know, gotta go fast, right? Speed run. Yep. Doesn't matter how we go fast, just that we do go fast. I feel like one could outlet Sonic with some speed. Yeah. 
Especially if Sonic was like out of rings or something. <laughs> That's a pretty good menu to the book. Get that line up pretty good. Pretty happy about that. So as he makes his way through these screens, the path of, path of least resistance is the uh, most favorable one. So as much as uh, you might make some money by mowing some lawn and the length of the past, you, uh, it is slower. So the least amount of grass patches you mow down, the better. But, uh, he's into the, uh, the desert place with the time here. So, I'm gonna move up to the next screen. We're gonna find a Sarlacc. I don't really know the physical name for the thing. It's called the Sarlacc Monster, even though it's Star Wars. Oh, the hmm. So, we're gonna head up into this room here. We're gonna get a heat. We're gonna avoid this guy shooting lasers. He's a jerk. You don't wanna get hit by him. He is a jerk. Although, I typically don't get hit by him. If I make a mistake, it's because I dash into him like a moron. <laughs> This screen, you can mash the book. Um, it does not, uh, uh, due, due to popular uh, popular notion, it does not make you go faster, but it, is, it does make a cool sound. <laughs> so he's able to get the dash right into the big key, which means he can turn around and dash right back up. Dash in, dash out. That's my motto for that room. That's my strat for that room. If you have to stop your dash somewhere in between, you have to walk to the edge of the platform after the big key, walk around the sand and dash down. Oh hey! Grab the pot there and close the door again. Just not. Oh, no. <laughs> not advised. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not what you wanted. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done that before, so that's pretty cool. Got to have those. That's never happened to me before. Moments, right? You managed to move off the hitbox of it and then move back on it. You're probably just like right on the edge of it. I don't know. Do, do you go for this spin speed outside of Desert 2? I do. It's okay, do I got you? it. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little ahead. This, so. is, this, is, this is a dangerous spin speed. <laughs> yeah, feel free but, to talk about why it's so dangerous. <laughs> uh, he uh, yells right pulled off beautifully, but uh, it's very easy to just go straight down. And when you're in that glitch state, Link doesn't go against the edge and then like wait a minute like you know how like sometimes like if you're trying to jump off an edge in this game like you have to hold against the edge for a second or two to jump well when you're in that glitch state uh jumping off the ledge is instantaneous so if you go anywhere near that ledge you're losing time <laughs> you're yeah losing a lot of time. like you have to go um, and menu back to the book and get back into the front door <laughs> go through the entire first floor again <laughs> Like, not the entire first floor, because you already have the big key, you already have the mids, but... <laughs> You're still losing about 45 seconds to yeah. You have to go it's all so... the way. <laughs> it's uh, really... It's, four... it's not worth it. It just looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Our four torches are lit, and we're going to go fight everybody's favorite boss, the RNG worm, otherwise known as Land Moldus. There's a brilliant setup here for the first phase, and let's see how we do... We got one in the first phase, very nicely done. It looks like one with full health and one with three arrows to go. Boy. So after the first phase, um, all bets are off where the squirms are going to spawn and jump and move. That, that was nice. We got three on that one. Yeah, uh, we got a little choppy there for a couple, uh, couple of phases, but uh, we brought it back at the end. <laughs> I want to say it was like a five cycle. It was a good cleanup. Yeah, I'm always um, striving for consistent four cycles, but I'm not. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Solid sub 18 desert. That's what you're looking for. Your PB is a 139 right now, right? Uh, 135. 35. Okay. You're definitely on pace to beat that. Sub 18 is a solid desert time. I thought you were going for the cactus dash from that was... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, allow me to perpetually disappoint you as the run goes on. <laughs> with, with stuff I won't go for. Dang. <laughs> Time to play Where Are the Crabs? 
Where in the world oh is Krabby God. San Diego? Ooh, that was... I almost uh, botched that horribly, but uh, we, we came out okay. Yeah, and what happened with that is you stopped facing right. Right there. You were set up for the quick hop perfectly, and then you moved, and then you moved up. But it's all good. Yeah, we're fine. That was a uh, fake flippers, which is another uh, non-major glitch, I guess, minor glitch, however you want to call it. Um, yeah, that's another Japanese 1.0 exclusive glitch. So that's achieved by jumping off the cliff into the water. So you're hitting the water and you're transitioning the screen on the same frame. So when you do that, the game doesn't really know what to do with you, so you get to swim. Even but, though you don't have flippers. It does come with risks, though. That next screen... Uh, if you get hit while you're in the water, the game doesn't know what to do with you because it checks again to see if you're able to swim or not, I guess. And upon determining that you're not, it tries to move you to land, but doesn't quite get you there right. I think you're maybe because you're not on the right layer and you soft lock. <laughs> yep. You scroll the screen indefinitely and you have to reset the console, which would end your run because there are no resets or saving quits allowed in this category. Wow, that that boulder your run. wanted my head. <laughs> oh wow! I love that sideways, sideways rolling boulder. Yeah, that was crazy. I didn't know the Rolling Stones were in town. <laughs> well, you know they never stop touring, so. It's true. <laughs> So you get to see Bunny for that's the only time you get to see Bunny unless you get hit by a thing by a, um by a Bunny Beam in Dark World. It's the only time you get to see it. But as far as fake flippers goes, that is the only instance in which we use it. Um, for the swamp, so for the swamp house, we do need to actually get the first. You will see us heading to Zora's Waterfall later in the run to buy the most expensive, overpriced pair of aquatic footwear you've ever seen. I know some people like to use the boomerang in the tile room. Like, I'll save it for, like, the last one, but I just like to poke dash here. Well, the new hotness is apparently Boomless Hera, so you never switch to Boomerang in a Hera. Well... <laughs> That's the new hotness. How do you get to the tile room with Boomless? You would, um, instead of mirroring out of the key room, you would just walk back up the stairs. Really? Yeah. And then you hit the switch again. And then you just dash up to the to the top of the rope. Interesting. Ooh. Nice. So we like these four tor torches and a chest appeared. And no rando fans, it does have the big key in it. <laughs> it's not the hook shot, it's not the, the, the gold sword, it's the big key. Psalm rub. It's okay. It's all right. That beat a room. We don't beat a room. Star room. Pit room. And yes, we do have names for every room in the game. <laughs> the next room is called Petting Zoo. We'll see why. So now we're gonna... We're coming to our first bomb jump here, so... Yelzrake is going to position himself in a bomb in such a way that it catapults him across the gap. So normally, without a bonk, he would have a two-pixel frame. He would need to be two pixels or less away from the hole in order to be propelled across. But if he bonks, instead of two pixels away, he can be up to six pixels away. And still get the desired effect. So the safe way is to bonk. To um, give yourself three times the chance to make it across the gap. So he's lining up for a bumper skip, gets no, no problem. So that's just a lineup thing. You just find a spot on the floor that works for you, line your sword up with a dash in the head. So, uh, what, what more do I have to say about Boldum other than this guy is a jerk? You want to take him out quick, but you also don't want to let him knock you off the side. 
but you can protect yourself from getting knocked off by holding your sword out as the Elzer is doing. And, uh, hopefully... You know what? I will take first try Moldor. <laughs> yeah! Doesn't It doesn't matter if the last hit was super sloppy. We didn't get a troll dorm. I'm A-OK. -okay. Yeah, see, that's the problem with this boss fight. It's, you know, the last hit, he doubles his speed, and he can become a erratic jerk. That is has become a little bit more unpredictable, but there's one simple method to remember when you fight Moldorm is the tail follows the head. So... The weak point is the tail, so the tail will be where the head was. Use that to get your slashes in play. So now we're going to head to the Lost Woods, and we're going to get a sword upgrade. So here's your pedestal. Got our three pendants. They were all in the light world this time. And we're on our way to the pedestal. But before then, we are going to pull a tree and get some rupees. So, I call this a bonus tree, so what you're doing here is you're setting up a, a tier, tiered bonus system in the game. And that's achieved by killing enemies without getting hit. Killing four enemies gives you the second lowest tier of bonus, which is five, which is four, four, five rupee gems. The highest tiered bonus you can get is four twenty rupee gems, which is achieved by killing four enemies without getting hit. So, it's awfully hard to go from the beginning of the game to now without getting hit, but... So that's why you got the, the blues. So, right in between them, if we reset the, reset the cycle by pulling the first route. So then after that, four enemies don't get hit, we go and get some reds. That's going to give us the money that we need to pay off the monkey in the dark world to open up the house of Titans. In other words, we're going to get extorted by a monkey and <laughs> the, fir the first time we step foot in the dark club. But first, got to go fight a wizard. We're going to dash back out. We're going to get a tele telekinesis. Ashra Hashrala. Saying that... Oh, no, stay away. <laughs> saying that Zola has been kidnapped. And if you go back to the sanctuary, actually, the priest has passed on it. But Zelda is now in the clutches of Aghanim and needs your help. So, Godspeed, Taco Castle. Did you see that guard this... pop on me? <laughs> yeah. You handled it well. I, if I was wearing my heart rate monitor, you would have seen a spike. <laughs> so, he's at so, 108. I'm so tired of missing Rupee Tree. <laughs> so, Yelzwick has 108 rupees. He needs 110, but he's perfectly fine right now because there's a room called Circle Pot in the Aghanim's Tower section that he will get six rupees in no matter what, so he's good to go. One arrow, one bomb. So, uh, well, the one arrow is a little more concerning. Yeah, the one arrow is unfortunate. I even pulled the extra arrows in Eastern, but I, uh, a little too... I well, there was the I made two mistakes with arrows, one in the Zelda gamer room in Eastern, and then it just took me way too long to kill landmos. So many wasted mm -hmm. arrows in there. So yeah, I would uh, I agree with your strat of using dinner time the dinner time strat here. Gonna it's called dinner you. time because you poke the door and it makes kind of like a tink 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 sound. I don't really have the dash Ooh. in that second room figured out completely yet, so. So, there was something that I could go over there. I'll still go over it, I guess. So, prize pack manipulation. In that room, the idea is to kill those two guys with a dash. So, when you kill an enemy with a dash, you set their drop rate to zero. So, you do not get an item, no matter what. The idea is to preserve that fairy drop that you saw in that room for Turtle Rock. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> You're saving it for... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it turns out those gold guards are in a prize pack with the pokies, uh, the, the, little, the little mini helmosaurs, and that's it. That's pretty funny. But yeah, that's, that, that's the whole reason we dash them. 
We're so we're setting up a fairy drop in Turtle Rock. That was a nice spin. Very nice. That room could have gone better. That's okay. There's some arrows. Yep, you have five in this room. It's a favorable those, those five are necessary for um, the Mimic Shroom and Pod. You only want to hang on to them for as long as you can. Oh, I missed the boomerang. <laughs> yeah, how many times have I missed that boomerang? Every I'm, time, I'll be honest, I'm amazed I didn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> I fall in there. It's 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 not fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up to Agonim. Agonim's gonna world, and then you're gonna fight Agonim. You must think all is lost. Zelda has disappeared before your very eyes. And, uh, you'd be right in the short term, but you'd be wrong in the long term. But um, you're gonna fight this guy. This guy will troll you mercilessly. So his first attack out of any phase that you just saw right there is a deflectible ball back end deal damage. Every other phase after that is 50-50 between a damaging uh, attack that you can damage him with and an attack that will just flay out and do nothing. But once he shoots lightning, the cycle resets and you get a guaranteed damaging shot on the first phase. So the most that you can get without missing any is 50. It's happened twice to a uh, well-known Link to the Past speedrunner who shall not be named at this time. But uh, we're up to one. Still at one. Oh, well, come on, one more, Agony. Let's go. Let's give Mr. Yelzerick a one here. And two. So you won't get more than three. Let's hope for the two. We're going to get three. Dang. So three's bad because you get an extra lightning phase, but it takes that out of the time. Two, you want to skip that lightning phase. Three, three is pretty common, but we had a really good shot at two there. It is what it is, just agonim being agonim. Yeah, on... Sadly, three is also the most common, so. Yep. Three is one of the most common. So right here, you're on top of the Pyramid of Power. Sahastrala is telepathically telling you what you need to do in the Dark World, which is you need to free the Seven Maidens. The seventh one is Zelda. So you need to free Six Maidens and Zelda to unlock the uh, barrier on Ganon's Tower. And then you need to go fight Agadim again, and then eventually Ganon. So our first destination is going to be the former Eastern Palace, now known as the Palace of Darkness. But before then, we have to pay a monkey to get into the palace. So that's where the rupees come in. Now, as soon as you enter the Dark World, these enemies hit a lot harder than your Light World. So the damage, the uh, difficulty factor definitely ratchets up right away. Um, you can only you can take half as many hits as you could in the light world, so definitely takes um, a lot of practice to get this game down, to be able to, to get through this game without needing safeties or heals or continues or what have you. But right here, this guy's like, yo, I need like 10 bucks just to follow you. So we're like, okay, you know, we're in a strange new world, so we need a friend, so pay him. He's like coming up to the entrance to this place. Big old place. Hey, I'll open it for a hundred. All right. Hey. Hey. It was a hundred and ten rupees right there, but you know. All right, in fine, fairness, I, I don't know anybody else who can open this place for me, so he's kind of got me uh, dead to rights here. <laughs> you can clip in there. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, oh. you can't do that in this category. <laughs> but it is possible to. It's, it's possible to do a uh, wall skip from <laughs> Death Mountain into Pod. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. But there's, there's another, but but there's another category where you do do that. But all joking aside, Kiki's a jerk and takes your money. All right, so there's a certain key route here that Yelzer is gonna follow. Uh, you got the first one to the left. He's gonna fall down, and get another key. 
Then he's gonna get the big key, then we're gonna be doing another bomb jump. Which is a double pixel perfect jump. Also known as the hammer yump. It's a really cool trick, and uh, Yells Rick is gonna pull it off because he's the man. I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> <clears throat> Before him, though. The funny thing is, like, if you dash straight into that wall in that room there, this little glitch, this little stair glitch that comes into play, where you go up some stairs and back down the stairs. It's actually pretty hilarious. It's infuriating when it happens. I don't think I've ever seen that. I've had it happen a few times, and I'm always like, why does that happen? There's a way to cancel it happening that I found out. You have to do a, you have to do a key dash on the door to cancel it. So if you down bonk off that wall, then... You know what you gotta do. Alright, so... Pick up a key there. Dash over. Key dash this door. And we're on the bridge. We're going... We're gonna go jump across the... You know what? We don't need... We don't need no stinking keys to get in the door above there. We're just gonna grab a bomb, and we're gonna... Call ourselves across the gap. Nicely done, sir. Thank you. <laughs> that kind of took me by surprise. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So what that does is that allows us to get the hammer and also allows us to skip getting a key. There's one less key we need to get from this dungeon. Because we just literally jumped around a key door. So it saves about a minute, minute ten tops over the other route. <sighs> We're gonna snipe this crystal switch with an arrow. We're gonna hit through here. Let's see if we can get. So there's a cool way to push this statue. This statue is known as the sexy statue. If you're able to push it, it's such a way that you just glide all the way around it. It's actually pretty cool. So these are the mimic enemies. They're pain. They move when you move. They attack when you attack. So if you look, so you basically can't stand right in front of it and attack it because it'll retaliate straight away. So the idea is to hold your sword out and manipulate them so that they're facing left or right, and then you can attack to your heart's content. Take them up. Alright, so we're downstairs. We're in the midst of a turtle party. Turtles in every room here. Mini, uh, oh, mini turtles in every room. <laughs> Get it. Oh, nice. So, the perf turrets. He always rank with the perf turrets. So, he was able to kill all the, all the turtles in one cycle of knocking them over. Otherwise known as perf turrets. Shout out to Sness Chalmers. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's the Helmet Sword boss. So you need to strike the Helmet Sword's mask 17 times with the hammer to break it. All the while he's moving around, possibly shooting fireballs at you, swinging his tail around. It'd be a bit of a nerve wracking for me. Very easy for this fight to go sideways. But if he does shoot the fireballs, you can actually cancel them with the 17th hammer strike to break the mask. I could have. So it turns out I it could right. have. <laughs> but I miscounted. So, he, he got the spin attack first, and then he was able to sneak two hammers in there, followed by a second spin attack. That was a very clean fight. Very nice event. So, your hammer hits uh, had deal as much damage as a charge spin, so... He takes eight slashes, or four charge spins, four hammer hits, whatever to kill the, after you break the mask, that's what it takes to kill. So now you have a 56 second crystal sequence here before you get to move on to the next area. This first first main here is like, you gotta save us, you gotta save us. This is where we are. We're gonna, I'm gonna mark all the spots on your map. And uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're gonna go, we gotta save us all. But, you know, I mean, we've saved them all so many times that, you know, I mean, come on, we know where you are at this point, so, you know, let's speed it up here. <laughs> Alright, so, 
We're on our way to the Village Outcasts. First, we're going to get out of here. A series of nice dashes. we get us out of here nice and quick. And then you're going to get to see yet another glitch called the Item Dash. The Item Dash is achieved by pressing the Dash button and the Item button on the same frame. With the, so with the hammer, the result of that is <laughs> you you hammer down everything in your path. You dash so so instead of dashing or instead of hitting those pegs down one at a time, you dash all mow them all down right in the line. Super cool. So now we're gonna head over to the haunted grove. We're going to get a flute, and then we're gonna go get a duck. Duck hype. Duck hype. <laughs> Swag bird. He's gonna get a shovel. We're gonna use that shovel to hopefully dig up an octopus on the first try. <laughs> first try dig meme. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Hondo Rose. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, memes. Bless them. <laughs> I guys gonna fade away. So, if you go back with the Ocarina to the other guy and play it for him one more time, he turns into a tree. So, he gets to hear his Ocarina one more time. But I guess in oh, that way, no. he can kind of get again, too. So, here we have the fastest red yarn all of Hyrule yeah. in Bolt. I went up the stairs. I've never gone oh, up the no. stairs before. You've seen Bolt is catching you. Oh, that sucked. All right, so <laughs> you, you you know you, you know that room right for the Lost Woods with the three guards. Yeah, hit the tree Bong. and get the apples. Yeah, <laughs> get the apples. I didn't know if you know about the apples. Yeah, no, it's it's a good it's a good backup, particularly since I'm not getting um, powder. Yeah, I'm keeping the mushroom for fake powder later, but. I am not getting powder. Yeah, you were you were a little to the left, but you're still in a position to double dash him. Shout to Mario Kart. <laughs> It's a good bonk. It's the, the, the thunk, the thunking sound that the uh, that the hammer makes. <laughs> it's a thunk, not a bonk. Thunk. Ooh, two fairies. I know, right? You don't really want you don't really want to see them there because they create lag. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're gonna instead of instead of going straight to dungeon two, we're gonna go to dungeon four because you know speed run. So basically, defeating Dungeon first or second in this case allows us to procure the Tempered Sword after this one, which makes the rest of the boss fights a little quicker. So that's the reasoning behind that. Otherwise, we'd go to Swamp next, and we'd have the Hook Shot early, which would be pretty dang cool too. But quicker boss fights over Hook Shot all day. <laughs> Not a lot to talk about. Not a lot to talk about in uh, the East Town. Um, just gonna do some movement here. We can talk about the Hellway. What be a closer to it? This is a God Pixel where you can just dash straight up the Hellway with ooh. Over a little overzealous there. <laughs> Not quite. So here's the Hellway in. Uh, Right in the middle of the middle conveyor belt is the god pixel. But um, even if you hit it, it's not guaranteed because you still need the enemies to line up way for you not to get hit. <laughs> yeah, I was just slightly off. It's still a good hellway. Any hellway where you don't get hit more than once is a good hellway. Indeed. And we're just gonna right, open this hole for no reason. No reason at all. No. We're just gonna let some, it's a dark one. We're gonna let some light in. <laughs> so 
So ignore the fact that we did that. That room has no context or bearing on anything in the story, and uh, know why we did it. No, I'm just kidding. You uh, you need to blow that hole open to the the floor there to trigger the boss fight. Which we will see in a few minutes. Walk right into it. <laughs> Oops. It's okay. It's all right. No, you're fine. You're still in good shape. There's two hearts in the jail cells. Are there really? Yeah. <laughs> under the under the under the right side pots. I did not know that. It's amazing. I don't know. I don't know my safeties. <laughs> I'm very Go much this. very much a rails runner when it comes to these sorts of things. Like I learn like <clears throat> Ooh, that was bad luck with that red jelly. Yeah, the funny thing is I slashed him and then I still still took damage anyway. The arrows here. So we're pulling up arrows for Vitreus, so it's the Meyer boss. Um, alright, so we're approaching the blind fight. So, blind is scripted. So, if you do the same thing, you'll have the same result, the same fight every time. So, um, a lot of you probably know this fight is one of the hardest as a kid, and you'd be right, man. It's awful good, but if you follow these simple steps, you'll Not kill so this guy man. every time without getting hit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So, obviously, the fight is off script now. Oh, that is and, not good. Uh, now you're running for your life. <laughs> that is not good at all. You hate to see that happen. Yeah. I'm not really sure what went wrong in the second cycle there. I slashed a little too late, I think. So now the refight on this guy is a lot worse than the initial. Because he's already spawned. And he's already all the way to the back of the room. So there's no area where he's moving up. Like we have got the free three hits on him. So um This fight, this free fight can be rough. But Yell's race gonna give a hell here. Alright. Remember only the fourth fireball is aimed at. Like... This is going to uh it's gonna be fun for a little bit here. I haven't messed up the blind fight in so long. Dang, man, I'm sorry. It's okay. That's, you know, marathon luck. That's how marathon luck is, you know? You got him this time. But I will say that the boss refight, if you do wind up dying, the boss refight is a lot easier. Beans. You can stay at the bottom of the screen and kind of. I gotta oh. stop getting hit by the freaking laser. How the heck am I getting hit by that laser so much? Oh, my goodness. We're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna muscle through here. Yep. We're gonna persevere. Take all the steam out of the run, but, you know, it's okay. It was a really good run up to that point, too. Nah, uh, deep breath. You got this, man. Yo, let's get some hype for you to wake up in the chat here. Let's help him power through this. from the fact that I very obviously missed. 
Oh, you were close on that one, dude. I just, you know, I know fireballs deal one, heads deal two. There's no excuse for running into a head, and I walked right into one. The well, lasers do two as well. I appreciate the support chat, I really do. Yeah, when this fight goes sideways, it's, it, it, it gets bad. Unfortunately, but we were close on that one. Flew right into me. <laughs> Myself. I'd say this is since maybe it might be a little bit beneficial to flute out to four, flute out to three, and go get a red potion. We get a bottle. <laughs> oh, well, just I could actually go and get powder at this point. <laughs> yeah. And just get the refill from the shop. Oh, this is really, really frustrating. Alright, you got this bit. Come on. I say if you if you get it here, I'd say just press on now. You got this. Okay. What, first try, right? First try. <laughs> first try. Nice to <laughs> There we go. Wind down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. RNG bullets. Um, no. What happens is, is those uh, those fireballs that he that he's firing only the only every fourth one that the head shoots is aimed at Link. The other ones are just the other ones are just aimed at whatever direction the head man managed to be flying at that time but the fourth one is aimed at like so there's that <laughs> but there we go yells rank okay so yeah. nice. that's what that's what can go horribly horribly wrong if you don't follow the blind script so i was a little bit off i had taken a little bit of damage throughout the dungeon and i just i, I got wrecked and then the refight as D Rock had said, it's just absolutely zero fun. The all said that. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the refight's a mess, yeah. The refight is awful. But, um, yeah, there is a script for that fight, and you follow the script, and you don't get hit. But, um. Funny thing is that usually when I do the script fight, I still get hit once during the second cycle because I just happen to be. <sighs> in a position where I, I walk into one of the fireballs from from blind during the second phase, but it doesn't just ever beats. doesn't ever cost me the whole fight. It's very strange. Yeah. Alright, so now we're gonna this toad here that we picked up that <laughs> toad. We're gonna bring him back to his brother in the light world. It turns out that this toad is actually a very talented person. And we are going to upgrade our sword for 10 rupees. So the funny part is, here we go. Let's talk about this for a minute. So we got flippers, 500. We got opening up pod, 110. Stronger sword, 10 rupees. It's a so, steal. You know, <laughs> it's not much economy, of a market of sword users, I guess. Their economy in Hyrule makes no sense, man. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have the level three sword, which is as strong as a hammer strike. Oh. Which is also the same uh, damage caliber as a spin attack with the master. Or is that regular slash now? Yeah, yeah, you, uh, you saved his bacon. I, I mean, you can make that argument as well too. I'll give you that argument, Alec. 
It's true. <laughs> it's a favor. Yeah, but you, you, you do have a point. Get the get the friends and family discount. Yeah. <laughs> you saved my rum from agony and discount. Or you saved my rum from being a toad. Not that there's anything wrong with being a toad. Oh, definitely not. Shout outs to toad. Shout outs to toad. Oh. The okay. bonk. Shout outs. Shout outs also to Old Brother Where Art, though. You've never seen that movie. That movie's great. He's a toad! He turned him into a toad! If you haven't seen that movie, you'll see it. it's a great movie. Okay, so, right here, we're gonna pull this statue in such, in such, a, in such a fashion that the, the, uh, the Gibdos here kind of. They're kind of space shots to the point where they kind of just wander around while they see fit. Sometimes they get in your way. They do, we slash them out of the way. Uh, that was actually a very clean level. Very, very nicely done. All right, so here are, here's our third bomb jump, very similar to the hammer bomb jump setup. We're going to plant a bomb down, bomb across the wall, go across the gap, get a fire rod, jump in the hole, or mirror. Yeah, I prefer... I prefer uh, mirroring to save health. That's fair. Just because... You got fa fairy drop, too. Yeah, I got, I got the lucky fairy. Watch the spike. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I usually use a pause buffer heading at that wall. Oh, is that where you switched fire up? Yeah. Makes sense. So, but that, that was fun too. As you can also save that pause buffer for right here as you just used it. You can also use it right where you did too. Bah. Either or. Mean fire. Oh, that was bad luck on the yeah. fire thing. But that's a that's a, such a free key dash setup. Just, you got like three different RNGs for that fire snake, and you got the one that doesn't allow it. Because usually it's the, uh, the other two out of the three allow you to just key dash that door. You got the one out of three that you can't. Ugh. Okay, so I messed that one up. That's okay, though. Yeah, you were a little, you were a tad bit, uh, knocked him off board. Right, so here we got Mothula. Mothula doesn't take damage if you hit him into the spikes, but it can make this, uh, this fight seem pretty imposing, because most of the time he's near the spikes. So you kind of want to, like, if he stops near the spikes, you want to hit him with a fire rod to stop his cycle so he doesn't shoot his ring at you. And uh, you want to hit him into one of the blocks or in the center, or up, or away from the spikes. That was well done. So, because, because, uh, Mothio doesn't take damage from spikes. So spikes are classified in the same damage class as the gold sword. Turns out that Mothio also doesn't take damage from the gold sword. So shout out to the Rinda community for that little tidbit. All in all, that was a pretty good skull woods for me. That was solid. So here we have another crystal sequence, blah 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 blah, save mids, blah 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 blah, sort of. So our next destination is going to be the Ice Palace, which will contain our few things. We will sequence break the dungeon, we will skip the intended item in the dungeon, we have another bomb jump, which is arguably the hardest one in the game, and we have a boss fight that is hard. Which we'll all cover in the coming minutes. But first, some flippers. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go pick up some items too. We're gonna go get the quick medallion from the catfish, and we're gonna go get the flippers from King's Laura. So right here, the quickest path to the quick medallion is the flute to Link's house and enter the portal at Hyrule Castle, 
and make our way up to the little lagoon from there. I never get underneath that little guy, so I always hesitate. Yeah, that's that's the lottery. That's the lottery roper right there. So I well by that I mean that you're gambling when you dash down because there is a chance he can hit you. Yeah, and it's, for the... me it's not worth the two hearts. <laughs> that's fair. All right here we're gonna toss a rock into this circle of rocks. To wake up those wake up a catfish catfish will be like why you wake me up have this medallion <laughs> we're gonna go buy some after that we're gonna go buy some flippers okay, so this this spot here is uh, for speedrun stance is pretty precise in terms of the where you dash because um, there's a spot at the top here where you can be half in the water, half out of the water, but still have the land speed that's much faster than dashing through the water. But uh, this place can, it's not hard, but it can be up here. So, right here, we're gonna talk to the big Zora. We're gonna fork over 500 bucks for some finger webs, as they're called. I don't know. Do they wear them on your hands? Or finger webs? I have Everywhere no idea. Are... <laughs> they look like they go on your feet. They sure do. And as a certified scuba diver myself, I've never put fit. I always put them on my feet. <laughs> Another fun fact, as a certified scuba diver, I've never paid $500 for fins. <laughs> <laughs> I've paid far less than that. I really want to go into ice with beams. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Just to make the second room easier. And other things. <laughs> Alright, she has like a There, overall clip done, and go. Alright, so with the extra blast there, make sure you pick up a magic drop if you see one. Because you shot the fire rod extra time. Yeah. You act like magic usage is important in this dungeon. Uh, it might be. <laughs> I'm not saying um, it's not, but it, it is. <laughs> with, the, with the boss of this dungeon, you have to go in with a full magic cage, otherwise you can't defeat the boss. You literally cannot defeat the boss. You have to mirror out and do the whole dungeon again and lose a bunch of time. Fun fun. Good times. Good times were had by all. So a precise bomb throw there allows him to both bomb the floor and hit the crystal switch, giving him a quick out into the hole. Not enjoying the spike room at all. This is one of my least favorite rooms in the game, dude. <laughs> I, I had beams walking in and I just messed it up. I know. Alright, you're alright. That or Bombos, but Bombos is slow. Yeah, you're right. You, you, because of the Bombos, but the speedrun never picks up Bombos. Very nice Ice Palace bomb done. Very nicely done. Very quick. So, that's another one of those. Precision bomb jumps to sequence break the dungeon. Yeah, so what I meant by that is we're never going to pick up the big key in this dungeon, and we're also never going to pick up the item in this dungeon, which is the blue mail. So the you're intended to have the blue mail for the boss, which have which has damage that you take now. So what happens now is cold stare hurts a lot. I never messed up the lonely fire bar room either. Well, I ask you, so, I'll ask you a question as a fake powder user here uh, in this particular situation. If I go up and all the way upstairs, are those fairies or anti-fairies? The one, uh, if you drop down, is an anti-fairy. But, like, if I were to go 
Like, are there actual fairies up there, or is there no way for me to get health at this point? Oh, if you drop down into the pit, you can get the anti fairy. You can get regular fairies. Okay. Well, we're just gonna wing it. <laughs> it's YOLO time with three and a half hearts. Yeah, you can. Don't, don't get hit by Cold Stare. Cold Stare yep. does four hearts of damage. The Falling Ice does two. Yellsberry can survive one hit from the Falling Ice, but not a direct hit from Cold Stare. So, you need eight Fire Rod shots to open up his shell, which is why you need full magic. He's one was one left. Ooh. Very nicely done, sir. Oh. <laughs> you handled it well. No, you, you know that fight well. I wanted to say something because I was hoping that you saw the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the last one that didn't take damage. You didn't die. <laughs> it does happen. It does happen. But uh, what you saw there was the classic six slash setup for the Colt Stair boss fight. Um, every once in a while, one can get away like here. But, um, the Elves Wake cleaned it up very nice, and we are through Ice Palace. So, taking away Thieves Town, how are you feeling about the run so far? <laughs> um, I'm feeling really good about the run so far with that one single six, sixth try blind exception. Yeah, it's been a good run. Um,. Okay, so from here, we're going to flip back to Link's house, and we're going to go south one screen, and we're going to go west one screen. And we're going to go Swamp Palace, which is the intended second level. And that's where we will get everybody's favorite sub-item, the hookshot. Hookshot's cool. The hookshot comes... <clears throat> Shout out to the hookshot. <laughs> the hookshot can save you in many a tight situation because while the hookshot is extending and retracting, you can't take damage. I'm gonna take that heart back. I want beams. Gosh darn it. Oh wait, what am I doing? I have to mirror first. I got so distracted by the fact that I got hit that I forgot to mirror. <laughs> I'm good. We're here. How's it going, folks? Something's wrong with that dungeon. I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, it's looking a little dry in there. Fun mirror trick. Yeah, so here's the last of our minor glitches, the mirror block erase. Stop pushing a block while it's being pushed, use the mirror, and disappears. Don't try <laughs> in a dungeon, though. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do it in a dungeon. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll want it back to start. Yeah. Mirror works fine in a dungeon, but it doesn't work in that specific location. That's literally the only spot in the speedrun where we do that trick. It's like the fake flippers. You're only going to see it once. As little Samson, yeah. you're fans only gonna will, hear it will, once. Well, no. <laughs> Big flippers. You're only gonna see it once. You're only gonna see it once. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, so here we have the Swamp Palace, um, the intended second dungeon. So the danger rate is far lower than Ice Palace. So. <laughs> But there's still a lot of precision movement in this dungeon that can make speed running it and getting it fast time this stuff still pretty difficult. But uh, your your danger of dying is very low. Yeah, because if if I had, I can say if now as as a, as a thing because I'm happy that it didn't happen. If I had died to cold stare, we would have come here next anyway. Yeah. Without going back into ice, because this one requires this dungeon requires no magic at all. Yep. So we can walk in here with no magic and clear it, even with seven hearts, because it is dungeon two. What am I doing? I gotta go back. I'm out of order. I started trying to push blocks. That's nice. <laughs> I'm still, okay. I'm still a little discombobulated from the Thieves Town incident. <laughs> uh, trying to stay focused. Gotta hit the switch, and I gotta remember to hit it again. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to hit it again. That's the, the, one, yeah. the one repeating thing that you see in Dark World Dungeons is that there are a couple spots where you get one chance to hit a switch, and if you don't do it, 
you don't see that you didn't do it for minutes. Yep. And then you suddenly find yourself in a bad spot and you go, oh, crap. <laughs> if you don't hit that switch a second time, you block yourself from the big key. And you don't know it until you get to the big key. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, we're, we're working our way up to the big key now. So, in case you're wondering, D-Run, are there any other dungeons where we skip the big key? No. The only one that we do that is Ice Boss. We have to get the big key in the rest of the That was a rough room. Yeah. Those, uh, those gliders, they, uh, they can either go short or long. And if they go so long, they, sometimes they screw red box. <laughs> So evil. So let's, I know, let's put some red blocks right in front of the key. That'll get them. <laughs> then they'll have to call the Nintendo help run. Or use a game genie, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so we have the big key. Time to get the hook shot. Yep. The hookshot has a cool utility in which you can't take damage while it's extending or retracting. It also has a glitch state that allows you to push things very fast, which is very cool. It is very useful. And it you the hook dash is also what allows you to um, do the Argus quick kill, the zero cycle. Which I won't be doing. I can't do it either. <laughs> It's a hard trick. I've I've done it. It's hard. It's very precise. I actually have not. I've never gotten in a run yet. It looks so cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's it's swaggy for sure. Also, make sure that you pick up the bomb and the arrows in the refill room because you need two bombs leaving this dungeon. Gotcha. You need one to open up the ice rod cave, and you need another one in the basement of Misery Mire. Excuse me, Ace of Arrows. <laughs> <laughs> you do play Zelda in the one game long. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. I didn't get hit. Let's put it in the CDI does exist. Come on, those games are great. It's first how bad they are. <laughs> Bombs, rope, lantern oil, they can all be yours if you have the raw enough rubies. Oh, the infamous, you killed me! Good. Nice bomb sniper. Nice bomb sniper. Nope. Very nice. I moved too fast. But we're alive. So. You won't suck up the first phase, though. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, the 3DO. <laughs> my cousin actually had a 3DO, and I remember playing uh, D on it. I remember playing Daytona USA, too. Wow, Daytona USA was on something other than the arcade? Yeah. It was on the Sega Saturn, too. All right, so Argus down, Maiden saved, and then you get another crystal spill. This one here is the longest of the crystal spills. This one is 56 seconds long. Well, the, the longest one is this one, the second one. The shortest one is these. Two. Which I felt bad for, so I extended Thieves Town as long as I could possibly do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have another little bit of item cleanup to do before we hit the misery mire. So first things first, we're gonna walk to the dark one, then we're gonna flute to the to Death Mountain. And we're gonna ascend to the Tower of Hera and we're gonna get the Ether down, which we need to open up Misery Mire. But to do that, you know, Death Mountain hasn't changed all much, still falling cabbages everywhere. Now we have the hook shot, which grants us a little trick called hook speed which um, allows us to get up the stairs very fast. There you go. 
Nice. Very nicely done. So, as you can see, he was able to climb the stairs very fast. We are going for heart. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about it in time. <laughs> so, fire rod it is. <laughs> yeah, you'll be okay with a fire rod. And uh, if you kill a crab on the way to the ice pub, uh, ice cave, you might get hard too, though. True, very true. Just I want to the drops if I get any. Hey. <laughs> Patience pays off. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. That'll work. <laughs> so, this is the last item that we're going to pick up in the overworld the ice rod. The last item that we. last overworld item. And, uh. The last. Don that's if. unless Yeldrake is getting the uh, red nail, which I don't think he's getting. I am not. The last item that we're going to get is the red cane in Lizard Wire. That'll be the last item we pick up for this video. That should be it. Yep. Nice work for So what Yelzrak was able to do there is position the camera in such a way that the warp animation finishes 34 frames sooner than it usually does. Plus resulting in a quick warp. That's why you kinda got like a little quick animation after the ball transition. So saved half a second. <laughs> bird toss, bird toss, <laughs> my man. <laughs> That this bird. man loves oh. memes. <laughs> Y'all's like I'm proud of you. <laughs> Ooh. It's okay. So here, so here's my two. Uh, Y'all's ready to clean up the room very fast, and we're gonna enter the room. Oof. Bonk. <laughs> Legit bonk this time. Bonk. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's one of those ones that are like, do I have it? I should have it. Yeah, I like, I, I thought I was there. I was not there. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> wow. I can't believe I ran into that. Fire. Yeah, so, so what you gotta do there is you go up into that little uh, area above. And you chill there for like half a second, and then you dash down, and the, the fireball misses you. I haven't I haven't worked on that enough to know exactly what the timing is. Yeah, that's that's the timing. Okay. But if you <laughs> it, 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 if you walk if you walk behind the fire snake though, like if you dash over, you have to do that. But if you walk behind the fire snake, you don't have to do that. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because you lose a lot of time being yeah. forced to walk behind the fire snake and it throws the timing of the beam off. Or not the beam. Yep. Ball, yep. Whatever it's called. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. That makes sense. Alright, so the general adage is the torch room is 20, 20 minutes away from the end of the game. Um, we have a 116 time. So it's a very solid time. So, uh... Let's see what happens with the rest. We're gonna get some clean play here on out. I know we are. Maya's one of those dungeons that is once you learn it, like Maya's like super intimidating when you're first learning the speedrun, but once you sit down and go through Maya a few times, there's a there's a way to walk through Maya where you don't really take damage. So the idea is to get to the boss with at least six hearts. Otherwise, you have to do the slow count, which is no way out. So this room here, we're going to take three hearts intentionally to go <laughs> fast. I uh, ended up so taking... we're going to get a heart drop. I ended up taking five and getting one back. Whoa, what the heck? I have never missed that wizard rope with that dash before. I have never done that. 
We're down to three hearts. We're down so to three hearts. We cannot do the quick victory skill because the quick victory skill requires five hearts. Which requires actually six hearts because you take five hearts of damage. Mm -hmm. So Yelzrake's gonna have to play very, very the rest of this dungeon, and he's gonna have to take his time with the boss. But, um. Actually. I should be okay. Because I'm gonna do fake powder. Sounds like you have a trick up your sleeve, sir. Yeah. So, what we're gonna do here. <laughs> we're gonna get hit by something. If you wanna explain fake powder, I've actually never used it. Okay. So what I did right there was I loaded up the... I, I emptied my magic meter. And then I loaded up the cane of Samaria, which we just got. And then I use it, and you get the message saying that you don't have enough magic. And if you spam pause to get to the menu, and then menu over to the mushroom, when you come out of the menu, it throws the powder as though you have powder. Nice. Now we can actually do the, the uh, adventurous quick kill because we have plenty of parts left. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, still get two lasers. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Then eight hearts, eight arrows right to the eyeball. Off to Turtle Rock. Or, as some may say, Turtle D Rock. <laughs> or Dwayne. Dwayne Turtle Rock Johnson. Oh yeah, so the yeah, uh, fake powder is, I guess, relatively recent discovery. Uh, as Chad is uh, opining to, uh, it, I found it to be a pretty useful step uh, as you're working your way, as you're uh, divesting yourself of safeties in the run. You get down to if you need a stepping stone between. Um, only Sankhart and Sankhart, Sankhart and Powder. Because Powder takes 45 seconds to go and get after you get the duck. So if you can do anything to save that 45 seconds, then by all means. And that's exactly what I end up doing right there. Is uh, in, in exchange for the 45 seconds, I am essentially telling the game that I don't intend to die or be at risk of death until Meyer. <laughs> yep. So... Which, with the exception of blind, was absolutely true this time. <laughs> Someone called the Hyrule signature and showed this comfort part of that yells rake is slimming. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> this was the dash. I think Prolix is coming to coming to arrest you here. <laughs> What's going on, Prolix? <laughs> Somebody. That's okay. All right, so we go a little bit different with the up. Uh, up the fountain this time. We go over to this cave on the right side. Now that we have the hook shot, we can go over there. So this takes us to the right side of Death Mountain, and going up the traditional way and then moving to the right would take a lot longer than doing what we actually do. So, so from here, if you need a fair, there's one underneath that pile of rocks. And then we go on into Turtle Rock. The Duck Airlines has poor security. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do the hook dash for the uh, fast walking there, and I actually hooked up to one of the one of the pegs. That was pretty funny. Yeah, so we we hit the pegs counterclockwise. Portal and quake, and we're in line. One of the last crystal punches. Okay, so, Turtle Rock, everyone's favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love this place. The split is perfectly stable and nothing ever goes wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> Oops. Um... All you Earth Bonificium out of out there, that would be the same thing that I'd be saying if I was talking about Winters. This is great, this is awesome.
Alright, so I roll the room. Yell's Rake is going to use the Hookshot Molnar ability to avoid taking damage to the rollers, and he's going to mirror up to go get the full magic and start the dungeon once again. Set himself up for the Chomps room. So we can have full magic for there. It's a good method to use if you're starting to get the hang of Turtle Rock, but you don't quite have comfort with your own magic usage yet. Which is like me. <laughs> you want that fresh start. So we spin the if we get a double spin on those guys, they die as the now chopper up everybody's so we get right side chops. So that's pretty 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 manageable. Very nicely done. Perfectly timed. Thanks. The worst RNG is when the two chomps go left and right respectively and you have to go up in the middle. That's the worst RNG because it's a pain to position the block in such a way and then have the chop not get in the way and have and have the blast hit both at the time. It's ah mess. Yeah, it's gnarly in a bad way. <laughs> So it's Pokies 2. Black. Go dash down, hit the switch. Black. Bonk. We're going to double spin this guy. We're going to turn into a bunny. We're going <laughs> to avoid the Zany Fairies. We're going to walk back up. There's more Zany Fairies. And double spin, get a key, get eight bombs. And then we're going to avoid some more Zany Fairies. <laughs> and then we're going to go. <laughs> I love the play by play. That's so good. <laughs> That's, that is exactly how, I mean, if you, you can check the world record run. That is exactly how that room is done. <laughs> Don't at me. All right. <laughs> Hit the switch. Avoid the anti fairies through the door, through the tube. <laughs> right. Coming up on another room here. Two Poke Monsters to defeat Andy, guys shooting fireball at us. Fun fun. So we might actually be able to cycle the prize back to the point where we get a fairy drop. Ah, not yet. That's okay. Good. You're good on arrows now though. Yeah, that's a, a helpful thing for sure. You're good on arrows for G Tower now. Oh shit, yeah, I didn't want to do that yet. <laughs> I might. That was good. That was, it was a good enough. It was a good enough start, and then I hit the, I hit it a little too soon. Ah, yeah, that was fine. Alright, so this is a fun room because you see all these tracks going every which way, and you can get taken astray very quickly. But uh, as long as you do everything right, you just take the one hit from that one fire bar there. So that's the fastest, most direct way through this room. Take the one hit, off you go. You can use your hookshot and vulnerability to damage if you want, but if you avoid that one, then you have to the third one. Because your cycle will catch up if you have to do it again. So right here we got laser skip. Ooh, not quite, but yeah, got hung up. Good enough. All right, so now your next drop will, will be a fairy from that prize pack. Oh, so the next, time, the next time you kill a ball and chain yard, a, a mini <laughs> helma, or a um, pokey, you'll you'll get a fairy. Excellent. It goes it goes hard fairy. All right, tricks. All right, head ice in. We're going back to him, boys. Let's push the fire on. Because well, that head's exploding, you can't open the menu for some odd reason. So you have to open up the menu before you deal the deciding blow to the ice head. Which once you stun him with the, with the which once you stun the fire rod, fire head with the ice rod, you can slash him. So you can switch rods and yeah, that's so the boss. Everybody's timing seems to be slightly different for when they do the menuing. And some people, I know that some people go for four slashes on that first, on that first ice beam. But I'm, that timing is kind of tight where I can comfortably do three, and then hesitate for a second and then throw another ice out there and then switch. That's fair. 
one more. Uh, at the end of the day, it all boils down to one. Oh, look at fight. Clean. And fight. So now you've saved Zelda. Yeah. Now you've collected all seven crystals. So now you can go break the seal around Gan's tower and do the end game. We're gonna have to dodge a bunch of enemies first. Chat, guess what chest the big key is in Gans Tower? <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess. I know this is gonna sound crazy, chat, but I'm gonna guess it's in the vacation. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. RGL! You've done it. <laughs> Don't at me. It's a, it's gonna be vanilla. Don't at. So I, I always take this first key here. Cause it's, I know it's of the keys. It's the slowest one, but we're talking slow is in like frames. You know, it's not like. It's safer than the other one, too. Yeah, it's not like seconds, it's... Get out of my face. Ooh, that was unfortunate. Fortunate timing with that. Let's get let go there. Alright, so... Not a ton to talk about in the first couple rooms here, but there is some cool-looking tech in these couple rooms. You throw the boomerang down, you shot over to the right, the boomerang comes back to you on the right, hits the switch, off you go. I always found that room to look very cool. Yeah. When, when done right. There's not, there's not a ton of speed tech yet. We're on, right now, we're trudging our way up to ice on the coast. You're checking out one more mandatory arrow drop, so you're gonna have to... So, you're gonna, so you should be good on arrows. You may even be able to skip the 10 chest. So we're gonna pop this this lower right hand floor. And boss refight from the light world. Except now we're on ice. So this is like Disney on ice gone wrong. But um we're gonna refight all of the light world bosses in this. So you see uh Yell's Rake is did the same thing ten, as I'm the first gonna fight. Take, I'm still gonna take the extra ten. Just to be safe. That's super fair. Safe. Super safe, because mimics could go wrong. <laughs> Tw Twenty arrows is real safe. <laughs> that was a clean fight, though. Disney on ice. So for our first mimics room here. These red mimics can only be damaged by bows and arrows, so... I haven't had a time positioning them. Damn, that was, uh, pretty sloppy. There you go. Right there. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> well, that's fine. Don't forget about the fairy room, um, after the Game and Ball Z, uh, room there. The refill room on the on the lower area. You yeah. can bomb the hole in the. I was contemplating just going, but I guess I could. Uh... <laughs> so that that screen is called Gamma Ball Z. I don't know why it's called that, but it is. Fairies, full magic, nice and safe. So now we're gonna head up, and the next couple rooms are gonna be known as the. Gameplay. So room to room of difficult 
bot, uh, difficult enemy like placements. And, uh, you know, then we add in conveyors and ice and we have some fun. Everybody has a good time. That blue, that blue dragon head guy loves to go in between those two those spikes. I, I swear, he does that like every time. He is a bit of a jerk like that. And so now, land mode two. But we got a fire rod this time. Oh wow. I'm kind of worried about my magic usage at this point. There's a um, there's a magic in the lore I caught the next round. Yeah, but it's just a small a one. Like, yeah, I usually grab it anyway, but I just yeah, I'm nervous Split about up, my own flashes. inability. <laughs> Those are some. Those were bad landmo patterns, but I handled them even worse. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm like after, like, like always, after like the main volley for landmo, it's just it's a mess. That fight is just is awful. There was a way to one cycle it in Light World. I would spend hours on it, but unfortunately there isn't. I have gone to two cycle. Let me go the long way around because I uh, missed some movement here. The movement in this room is pretty tight. Oh, got a laser on here. Get hit by a laser right now. It hurts a lot. Like a whole lot. <laughs> because I picked up those eight bombs off of that one guy, I now have... Ten bombs instead of two. They have plenty of bombs. Take health refill. Yeah, that's fine. Do a poke shot. Magic. Now we, uh, like I said, all, all the light robots. This, this guy again. Hamburger snake, round two. That was some really bad positioning on my part, but uh, he was very nice to me. Yeah, he got the spin off in the first one, so he'd be on that. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, just about there. Full hearts heading into the Helma Hellway. All of a sudden, the little Helma sword is just like, meh, 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 meh. Alright, yeah. so dash left and ag two. AKA Geometry Wizard. AKA Geometry Wizard. So Agatha's a little different. He's going to split himself into three uh, spawns of himself. The real one can still fire blue balls, but the, the copies will always fire, as I call them, power balls. Those are oh, the ones I that you the can, wrong way. Those are the wow. ones that you can reflect into to damage Agatha. Wow. I just wasted two full cycles with bad positioning. He hasn't fired a blue ball yet either. Yeah, he was nice the whole time. I got, I was sitting on five and I didn't hit down before I slashed. I just slashed up. <laughs> geometry was a geometry was a geometry 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 was a geometry. I turned I turned an easy a free three cycle into a terrible five cycle. I should be proud. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> no blue ball. Yeah. Yeah. You're, stre you're streaking directly towards 10 minutes on our estimate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> With like nine deaths in the team's town. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not really nine, but we're centering. All right, so now, so here we have Ganon. So Ganon fight is really technical. Gets the double spin, very nice. Gets the good setup. We're gonna go in the ring of fire. Look, we're gonna get. We're gonna get bopped by a fire bat, which is nice. We're gonna get what's known as a one and one, I believe. 
Oh, I wanted to. Still better than getting wrecked by a fire bat. Alright, so third phase. We want to slash when he lands. Hopefully he doesn't hopefully he doesn't um whoop around too much. So I'll set up talk about the about the torch glitch now. So once he gets to his final phase and all the the portions of the floor are gone. He's going to delete, he's, he's going to shut off the two, the two torches, but you'll notice that the left torch will go out about a hair second, hair second, a, a, a very, very briefly before the right torch will go out. The idea here is to relight the left torch before the right one goes out, so that the left one, so that the right one never goes out. So now we only have to deal with relighting one torch. At this point, we have 12, 12 spins to freedom. Sub 140 is still alive as well. Join me, Link, and I'll make your face the greatest in Corridor, or else you will die. <laughs> you got some nice triple hits, like It's nice, nice to see them. Good run. Good run, dude. GG. Thank you. Sub 140. With the dash we got there. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. boy. 38.58. <laughs> Nicely done, man. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, and you know what? I feel this this was, this had PB written all over it if I just got the blind fight right. That's such a shame. That's okay. <laughs> You would have PB with, with uh, if blind went good. Either that, or I would have gotten nervous as heck and botched something later. Because <laughs> you lost, you lost a good four or five minutes there. Yeah. So you were probably looking at like a one, a high one, a low one thirty-four, which I believe would have been PB, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sub one thirty-five is my tentative goal. The 